Yes, we made it through another week. Um, oh, hi. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little preoccupied. I got here a little late. Um, Bernadette's obviously back in town. It was so lonely. She was gone for two weeks. Like the first day, you just, I don't know about you, but you're thinking this is the greatest thing ever. You wake up in the morning and there's nobody to say, why do you leave your shoes in the middle of the room? And it was great. The first day was great and the second day was okay. And then the third day was rough. By the end of the first week, I watched Castaway. I never saw it, but I figured if Tom Hanks could be on a deserted island for four years and have a soccer ball for a pet dog, clearly I could be without Bernadette for two weeks. Wilson! Um, anyway, things are humming along. I'll give you a couple of reports, not on me, but on what's going on overseas. And hard to believe. Um, I guess, I guess the take home message, I know God has people uh, with different callings and they occupy different offices, you know, not everybody's an evangelist, but everybody should evangelize, yeah. right? But then there's people like Timothy who had the office and some people have the office and they have no problem with it. It's like second nature. Um, but I don't know, I don't really uh, understand why God uses one and maybe not the other as much, but I think it has something to do with not having any agenda and surrendering and just, you know, you think maybe, oh, I don't really have an agenda, but if you, if you are objective, sometimes you see you do have an agenda. And when you surrender yourself to God and just willing to do whatever he wants, a lot happens. But you got to be willing, you know? Like God told Abraham to leave his whole family, leave his country, and he didn't wince. You know, we have plans. We know when we're going to retire. We know what we're going to retire to. We know what we're going to do. It's hard for God to work in our plans, you know? because we're so preoccupied with self, not in an ugly way, I'm just saying. Um, Bernadette and I, when we came here or even coming to ministry, we had no idea what we were doing. We still don't have much of an idea what we're doing in the sense that, not that we're idiots, but we don't have an agenda. You know, I, I see some churches, they knew, yeah, they have a vision. You know, 24 and 24, we never had a vision. I mean, we, whatever God wants. I know that sounds really super spiritual, but it's that simple. You know what I mean? You've got to be willing to have your schedule interrupted, your life interrupted. But um, it's so worth it. It bears so much fruit, and you feel so purposed. And it's, a great, it's a, just a great feeling. Um, if you haven't tried it, just try it, you know, just let go already. Um, you're not in control of anything anyway, so you might as well give it up. Um, okay. How deeply loved your dwelling places? Uh, Application-wise, a lot of people think about coming to synagogue or church, and they use this. It's a little bit more than that. It's, it's a heavenly homesickness, Psalm 84. It's um, not just, yeah, it, it seems like it's this deep longing of the exiled Jews to come back to Jerusalem and go back to the temple. And there is, there is, but, you know, some of these things were written 3,000 years ago, and it doesn't take, you know, Yeshua's death and burial and resurrection in. So you have to be careful when you're reading some of these. Um, you are a new covenant believer, not a New Testament believer. You believe in the whole Bible but you're not an old covenant. 
it's kind of it's kind of weird like Jewish people get saved and we're like so pumped and we tell everybody and then Gentiles find the Messianic movement and they go back to the old covenant it's like they go back you know what I mean and they think now I got it because I'm Torah observant there's not one single solitary soul in this building who's Torah observant there was only one And, and don't think that Yeshua is the Torah with skin on it. He's way more than that. He's divine. Don't belittle it. I mean, don't go backward. You crazy? That's what all the letters that Paul wrote about, every single letter was the same. Like, who bewitched you? You're going back? There's always that guy that says, no, we're Torah observant. I said, do you put your wife out of the house when she is on her menstrual cycle? Well, no, because the, yeah, keep making up stories. Don't compromise the cross. It's sacred. Without it, you have nothing. You don't have access to God. You don't have eternal life. You don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. You're going to worship something, worship Yeshua. This can't save you, but God can. This can't forgive you, but God can. God's mercies are new every morning. How deeply loved are your dwelling places, Adonai Tzavot? That's the Lord of hosts that's talking about his power. My soul yearns. It, it's nice to read it. It's so much more important to, to really mean it. My soul yearns. Yes, faints. I'm exasperated with the longing. My heart and body cry for joy to the living God. There's tons of ways you could have happiness, but it's fleeting. Joy is a whole different ball game. You could have joy all the time, even in the midst of the worst circumstances. I mean, if we, if we only have joy when things are going good, what, what distinguishes us from people in the world? I mean, they could do that, right? They know how to be happy. We know how to be happy. But joy, you could have that in the worst of circumstances. Depends on what you focused on. The living God, it says, joy to the living God. The place, the courtyards of God is used more of a figure of speech in this psalm for the person who lives there. What would, the, what would the tabernacle be without the manifest presence of God? As the sparrow finds herself a home and the swallow her nest where she lays her young, so my resting place is by your altars. It's so beautiful. Peace with the Lord. There's no, no meta feeling. Maybe some of you don't have peace with the Lord. Maybe there's reasons. I don't know what the reason is, but one of the reasons might be an unrepentant heart. It says a broken heart and a contrite spirit. That's not somebody who's just feeling terrible. That's somebody who's penitent, who's repenting of their sins by going in a different direction. You could be very saved and very unrepentant and not have a close connection with God. And it's not God's fault. He's more than willing to forgive you. You can't keep compromising a certain lifestyle and thinking God's okay with it. Adonai Tzavot, my king and my God. <laughs> Kings have subjects, right? You got to figure out what, who you are. Are you the king or are you subject to the king? 
How happy are those who live in your house? They never cease to praise you. You know, our departed loved ones are better off than we are. I mean, that's theology. Not everybody believes in theology, but that's the truth. That's what the Bible says. Paul said, to die is gain. He wasn't saying that like we say it. He meant it. He couldn't wait to die. But he said, if I have to stick around, if I have to stick around here, if I, if I have to stay here, I'm going to tell everybody about the Lord. They never cease to praise you. I mean, that's what's going on right now in heaven. I mean, if you have a hard time praising God for the next hour, you're going to have a really hard time in heaven. How happy the man whose strength is in you. Guys, be careful. Don't give yourself too much credit. My strength is in the Lord. People told me, you're strong, you'll get through this. I don't know what they were talking about. I don't know how they manifest this, this like, you know, I'm like some superhero. In fact, I had 10 surgeries and I got these freaky wires running through my body that you can see. It's almost like when, when you see these movies, when they put stuff in the body that's not supposed to be in them, they get, they get superpowers. They put the stuff in, I just didn't get the superpowers. Passing through the Baca Valley, that's the Valley of Weeping. You can't go through this life unscathed. I, look, are you kidding me? Who told you that? And did anybody tell you when you come to faith, it all just gets good? <laughs> if you're evangelizing, if you're shining your light, if you're looking to save souls, you don't think the enemy's coming after you? He's not going to come after you right now. He doesn't really care that you're here. I know you think, Rabbi, that's, are you kidding? You're saved. What are you going to do, get more saved today? He doesn't care when you go to Bible studies. What's he care? There's one time you get him aggravated, and that's when you try to take somebody from his kung fu grip. James calls it snatching. Nobody likes to have something snatched from them, right? Back in the day in New York City in the 70s, they called them purse snatches. They just run by and take your pocketbook. Nobody liked that guy. So you're going to snatch somebody out of the fire. You're going to snatch somebody from Satan's grip. Now you're taking what's his. Everything else, sing, sing in the car, sing in the car. Go to your small groups. Don't forget the women and men's Bible study. Are those things important? Yes, in and of themselves, there's nothing wrong with them. But if that's where it stops. You ever think about being the enemy's enemy? Start thinking about it. He hates you, hate him. He wants to ruin your life, ruin his. The early rain closes with blessing. They go from strength to strength. And appear before God in Zion. God, this is, guys, this, this is a tough, you know, life throws a lot of curveballs. It gets tough. There's nobody in here who hasn't had a tough for all I know, half of you could be going through something horrific right now, something emotional, mental, financial, marital, who knows? But there is no question that God tells us that the trek through the wilderness ends with the joy of seeing the King. And if you're looking for anything more than that, you're missing it. Personally, I don't want to spend the rest of eternity on a cloud playing a harp. I don't even like the harp.
I want to hang out with the Lord and I want to get as close as possible. I don't want the nosebleeds. Some people are happy about the nosebleeds, not me. If you ever sat first row at a concert, you'd see the difference. Little princess was treated to a lot of first rows in concerts. Adonai, God of armies, talks about his power. Adonai Tzavot, the Lord of heaven's armies. Hear my prayer. Listen, God of Jacob. God, see our shield. Look at the face of your anointed. Better a day in your courtyards. Man, if this doesn't speak the hearts of those who love him, better a day in your courtyards than a thousand days elsewhere. Better just standing at the door of my God's house than living in the tents of the wicked. God's worst is better than the devil's best. God's house is permanent. The tents of the wicked are temporary. For Adonai, God is a sun and a shield. Adonai bestows favor and honor. The Bible tells us that God honors those who honor him. God honors? God honors us? If you honor him, yeah. He will not withhold anything good. So if it's good, he won't withhold it. If he withholds it, it's not good. Your definition of good is different than his definition of good. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, I don't presume to really know God. God to me is like the genome project. Every time you discover one thing, you realize there's a hundred things you don't know. There's certain things I know from here, but God's ways are not my ways, and as high as the heavens are from the earth as his ways from mine. I just defer. Maybe, just maybe, a couple of days in the hospital when I felt God wasn't there, maybe that was so I can feel what it's like for people to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. And maybe that would give me even more of an unction to evangelize. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to be accusatory. I, I kind of gave that up in the hospital, I promised. But what are you doing with yourself if you're not evangelizing? What's, what, what's the point of you being here? So if you're not evangelizing and you left this world, the kingdom wouldn't miss you. It would receive you, but if you're just consuming, Next week, I'm going to get into it because some of you are just deathly afraid to share your faith. I don't know why. He will not withhold anything good from those whose lives are pure. Don't think for a minute if you're living an impure life, you're going to claim something from God. <laughs> you're crazy. I'm totally off, but the Lord will bless me. No, he won't. It's not how, that's not how it works. It's not his system. And it ends magnificently. This is, as a believer, this is how you should feel. You should be eternally grateful for eternity. Adonai Tzavot, how happy is anyone 
who trusts in you. You feel happy? Well, I trust that just about everybody in here is born again. If not, this would be a heck of a day to be born again. It doesn't really take much. You know, the simplicity of it is hard for people, you know, intelligent people to grasp. They can't wrap their mind around coming before God and saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the way I've conducted my life. I'm so sorry for all the sin, all the people I've hurt. I'm so sorry for not acknowledging you. But it's not too late, right? And God says, nope. And I want to walk in a different direction. I want to be a blessing to you, a blessing to others, even a blessing to myself. But I can't do it alone. And God says, it's okay. We're going to make a transference here. You're going to give me a heart and I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. It's going to guide you. It's going to lead you into all truth. It's going to empower you to do what you can never do without it. And then you say, what if, what if I mess up the what if you're guiding me and I don't go along with it? Hey, I'm the ultimate GPS. I'll get you back on the road. Well, but it doesn't make sense to me. Why would you keep doing that? Because I love you. But why do you love me so much? Because you're mine. Seems too simple, right? That's the gospel. It changes your heart. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm living proof. And so are you. So if you've never made him Lord of your life, I'm telling you, this would be a heck of a day to do that. You know the book, Don't Die in Your Sins. We could have called it, Don't Be Caught Dead Without Yeshua. It, it's not anything to play around. Eternity is a long time. And to be separated from light and love and God is horrific. It's more horrific than anything you've experienced. It's dark and horrible, and it doesn't have to be that way. God's extended his hand in marriage. Say yes, man. Stop fighting it. Stop thinking you got to figure it all out. Stop thinking that, well, I can never be perfect. Exactly. That's right. You can't be perfect, but he can perfect you. And it's not instantaneous takes a lifetime. People ask me, how am I doing? I say, grateful. Just grateful. Another day to talk to my kids. Another day to tell Bernadette how amazing she is. Another day to love on you guys. Another day to share the gospel. Another day to bring donuts to the dialysis center so they'll like me. <laughs> Don't be miserable. I know you miss your loved ones. But if they're a believer and you're a believer, you're going to see them forever. And forever is a mighty long time. This is just a little interlude. You don't see it that way because you're, you're not thinking about eternity. You think about the here and now. This is a little interlude, a little intermission. That's all it is. Father, thank you for being who you are, for doing what you do, for loving us first and second and third, for forgiving us over and over again, for extending new mercies. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your peace and protection. Thank you for your prosperity. Thank you that our souls prosper. And thank you for the millions and millions of things that I don't even know what to thank you for. Thank you for the joy of our salvation. Thank you that we don't have to worry about where we're going. Thank you for the loving confidence. Thank you for the ability to come into your presence boldly. 
thank you that we can call Almighty God Abba Father. Thank you for sending yourself a piece of you in human form. Thank you for being tortured on our behalf. Thank you that it pleased you to crush the sun so you could see us as your offspring. Thank you for Shabbat. Thank you that we're in a country that we can praise you and honor you and not have to worry about being beaten or incarcerated. Father, please steer me, steer the elders into doing more things. I don't want to be here for nothing. I want to lift your shoe up and spread the good news of your kingdom. You are absolutely, positively loved here. I hope you can feel it. I hope we can shower you today with our praise and our worship. Saying you're good is the biggest understatement in the universe. And even though our worship is feeble, it's the best we got. Save some, change some, heal some, deliver some. Let some figure out what an honor it is to know you. I pray all this in Yeshua's name. Amen.